Hey everybody, Steve here. Uh, we're talking about Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 56. And we already read about this. Uh, this is a response video. And Jesus walks on the water and he made his disciples get into the boat and they departed. It was uh, the fourth watch, and which is about 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And the winds that came up and they were rowing and they weren't getting anywhere. And so Jesus goes out and he walks on the water again to display his... His, uh, his power and his authority over uh, pretty much everything there is. You know, the sick, the lame, the demonic, uh, the weather, uh, nature, uh, physics themselves, and uh, all the different laws and things like that, that he rules those things and he's in charge. Well, it ends up that uh, when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out. And he said, Be of good cheer, as I do not be afraid. And he went up into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in, them, in themselves beyond measure, and marveled. For they had not understood about the loaves, because their heart was hardened. Now, it's kind of interesting that you go back to that previous passage where it talks about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Even though they were the ones that gathered up the fish handed it to Jesus, Jesus blessed them, and they handed it out, and there was so many uh, remains, and they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of fish. And those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. That wasn't counting the women and children. But imagine how hard-hearted you would have to be to not believe. And again, it's interesting because... Sometimes we, we think of the disciples, at least I did anyway, to the point of where, you know, well, they're the disciples. They automatically knew everything. You know, they automatically believed. They had a, a heart after God, and they didn't stumble. They didn't fall. They didn't question. They didn't doubt. Uh, they, of course, they didn't hard, have any hardness of heart. That was only Judas who uh, betrayed Jesus. But here we see that, uh, for they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. And... How does that reflect on us? How many times have we seen God uh, just by letting us live and breathe and, and intervening in situations and keeping us from uh, just so many different dangers in our lives? And, uh, you know, we still have a hard heart. Look at how the Israelites in the Old Testament, how many things that God did for them, great and wonderful and miraculous things, and yet they still rebe rebelled against God and they still sinned against him. Um, it makes you wonder about yourself and, and, you know, is there any hope? But there is hope. There is hope in Jesus Christ. And that even though while Jesus displays and heaven and earth declare the glory of God, uh, who Jesus is and what he's done for us by dying on the cross and being risen again from the dead, we still have problems with that because we still want to hold on to that flesh. We don't want to give up. We don't want to yield. We don't want to lay down our lives and follow after him. Uh, and that's how ingrained we are in this world. Even as believers, there's still things that, that we want to do that is contrary to God's word. And that's something that we need to consider uh, as we continue in our walk with him that we need to make priorities and we need to say, you know, hey, well, is this glorifying God or is this not? And you need to make decisions on certain things. But yeah, it's, I mean, could you imagine that they didn't, didn't understand? Uh, it says here that uh, they misunderstood the real significance of the afternoon miracle and they could not grasp Jesus' supernatural character and it displayed his power uh, over nature and physics and, and, you know, all those things. It's hard to grasp what God has done. And sometimes, a lot of times, I think that's where we fall short, is that we, we, we don't understand, so we don't want to yield. But Jesus calls us to obey. Remember when Noah, when God told him to build the ark, and he didn't really explain a lot. He just said, do it. And there's a lot of other examples. Hey, just go out and do this. You know, preach for 120 years and, you know, that's, your call is to be obedient. Your call is not to know 100%. Granted, we have to know God's word and sound doctrine, but there are some things that we have to just yield to Jesus Christ and yield to God and his word. 
you know, continues on that they went and they came out of the boat and the whole surrounding region began to carry the sick on their beds and uh, whatever villages or cities uh, or the country they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might just touch the hem of his garment and as many as touched him were made well so again this is more proof uh, showing the disciples and showing the people that Jesus was and is the Messiah that he has been given all power and authority in heaven and on earth I think it gets down to the point of whether we recognize that fact and whether we keep that forefront in our mind and remember that and yield to him. It's something that, uh, that I think we forget because we get so wrapped up in the world. We get wrapped up in, in TV and movies and sports and, and you know novels and whatever else that the world has to offer. You know, the, the, the next great sale at the store or, you know, the new uh, Hannah Montana, Miley Cyrus, whatever music, you know, that stuff doesn't matter, especially if it's the world. What we need to get is on track with our lives and our service to God to be stewards. And then as we do that, to minister to other people with the things that God gave us, our time, our talents, our money. Don't be stuck in a church and think that your ministry is only giving to a church denomination. If you think that's the extent of your ministry and your giving, you need to back up and take another look. Your ministry is you interacting with other people. How can, how can cutting a check um, be the light of the world or the salt of the earth. You're just cutting a check. Yeah, it might help do some things. It might keep the lights on in the church, and it might might pay the pastor and, and the accountants and you know the lease and utilities. But when it gets down to it, when God asks you on that day of judgment, what did you do? How did you give? You're going to be accountable for your actions, just like the, the parable of the talents. Did you bury that talent, that time, those resources, that money? Did you reach out to those around you? Orphans, widows, homeless, prisoners, whatever the case may be, even your next door neighbors. Even if it's just handing out a track to somebody or leaving a track uh, on, on the, the table when you go to a restaurant with a big tip. Think about it. There's a lot of things you can do. Ask God to open up your mind and your heart and your eyes to see and hear what's going on and how you can minister to others. How you can be obedient to God and His Word. When you do, the enemy's going to fight hard against you because he doesn't want you doing it. He'll give you every, every excuse in the book and, and time will just click by fast like that. Next thing you know, a year, two years, three years, ten years have gone by and you've done nothing. It's not the way it's supposed to be. So anyway, uh, that's it for Mark chapter 6, verses 45 to 56. Lord willing, we'll, uh, we'll get back tomorrow and uh, do some more. So take care. God bless. Peace.